Have you seen the hordes of Twitter users with names like Bob.eth and Alice.eth? If you have, you might be thinking that .eth is the new .com and that these .eth names are Ethereum domain names or otherwise known as ENS. What is up guys? My name is Bree, and in this video, we're diving into what exactly is ENS, why you might want an ENS domain of your own and how to get your very own .eth address in about five minutes or less. So let's dive into it. So first let's get the basics out of the way and answer the question, what is ENS? And ENS stands for Ethereum name service. And this works similarly to how a .com would work on the web. So a .com address like google.com points to an IP address, which is a bunch of numbers. Memorizing addresses that are a bunch of numbers are a little bit difficult for humans to remember. So that's why we have things like dot com addresses, you have URLs that point to those addresses that will take you to where you want to go. And ENS addresses or your dot ETH name functions the same way, except it points to an Ethereum crypto wallet, like say one you have with MetaMask. So what happens is you purchase your dot ETH name, you hold that in a wallet as an NFT, and then you can use that name instead of your regular old wallet address when sending and receiving crypto. So for example, I've purchased the ENS domain BrieKerbison.eth, and I'm holding that in a MetaMask wallet. Now, whenever I wanna send crypto to that wallet, I can simply type in BrieKerbison.eth instead of that long Ethereum address that I normally would have to use. So let me grab my computer and I'll show you exactly how you can get your own .eth name in about five or 10 minutes. All right, so go to ens.domains and this will bring you to the ENS website. And you wanna go over here and go to app. You'll be prompted to connect your wallet. So I've got MetaMask here, so let me enter in my password. Okay, so I'm connected, I'm ready to go. If you don't have a MetaMask, it is 100% free. You can sign up for one and create one in a couple of minutes. You can watch this video where I walk you through the process of setting up your MetaMask wallet. But once you've done that, you can head back over here to the app.ens.domains and search for the ENS domain name that you want. So let's just search for my name. And you can see I've already bought this one, so it is unavailable. I cannot buy that, but it does tell you when it expires. So if there's a name you really want to get and you want to maybe have a chance at nabbing it when it expires from whoever purchased it before, you can keep track of that. But let's just do a different variation here to get one that is available. So if I search Brie Kerbison without an E. This is available and I can click on that and it's gonna bring up all the information I need to know before I buy. First here is the registration period and you can register your ENS name for a minimum of one year. You can add in multiple years just so you don't have to remember to come in and pay gas and renew it every year. And you're gonna see that you have a registration fee and also a gas fee. Now the registration fee changes depending on how long you're registering it for. So the minimum one year is 0.001 ETH. So generally that's around about $5. So if we go over to CoinMarketCap and search it, 0.001 ETH right now is about $3.46, so it's even less. Um, but what's gonna be the biggest cost here is going to be the gas because Ethereum gas fees have been crazy for the better part of the last year. Um, so that's where most of your money is going to be coming from. So it gives you an estimate here. So the 0.001 ETH for the registration fee and then the estimated gas fee is 0.038 to 0.04, which is going to end up being around $137 to do that. So yeah, gas is high, but that's the price we pay to get in early on things. Now the gas fee is also quite expensive because registering requires two different transactions. So they outline the process for what you can expect right here. And I'll show you that in just a second. And before you start this process, make sure you have enough ETH in your MetaMask wallet that you've connected for this to go through. Otherwise you're gonna get stuck and you can't get those gas fees back. So the first step is you're going to request to register, which I'll do when I click this. So let's do that. All right, so I've requested to register and I've confirmed that transaction in my MetaMask. You can see it is pending and I just have to wait. Okay, so now it has been confirmed and now step one is green. We can go on to step two. It's waiting for one minute for that waiting period just to make sure that nobody else is trying to register the same name at the same time. So it's just a double check that we don't waste gas trying to complete the registration if that name doesn't happen to actually be available. So wait for that and then we continue. 
All right, and now the wait is over, the register button pops up, I can click that. Again, it's going to prompt me again from my MetaMask. Let me just log back in. And here we have the estimated gas fee of 69.97, and the total amount is going to be 83.84, the amount plus the gas fee. So I basically just have to confirm that and then wait for that transaction to be confirmed on the blockchain. So there we go, it has been approved and now I am complete. So now my ENS name is mine. The last step is to click set as primary ENS name. That is going to set this name to be the one associated with my wallet. You can only have one name associated with a specific wallet address. Um, and that's just going to set my MetaMask address, which you can see here. It's going to associate that with my BrieKerbison.eth ENS name. Once you've completed that stage, congrats, you have your .eth name, it is yours. There's just a few things here I wanna go through that you can set up and change if you want to. The first step here is setting up the reverse records. Now I did this, I didn't realize it wasn't necessary when I did it. You don't have to set this up, but it will require another transaction on the blockchain, so you're paying gas to do this. So what does setting the reverse record do? So normally you would type in your .eth name somewhere in a dApp or somewhere in the crypto ecosystem, and it would figure out which wallet address is associated with that name. But this allows you to do the opposite. So for example, I'm already logged into the dApp for the ENS, and you can see that right here it has BrieKerbison.eth as my username for this, which previously this was just the you know, long number and letter wallet address of my MetaMask. But now that it knows that this ENS name is associated with this wallet, it automatically populates that in the DAP. So this will work as well in different places around DeFi, like if you log into Aave or Uniswap or OpenSea, this will all automatically bring in your information associated with your name. Now, speaking of the information associated with your name, let's look at what records we can add. So you can add all sorts of information to your ENS name that will show up in various dApps that support it. You can access any of the names that you own by going to my accounts. And if I click on that, that's gonna bring up the page for this name. So let's look at the initial information here. The important part here is the registrant and controller, and these are both the same. These are both set to my MetaMask wallet. And this isn't super important to most people, but the registrant is the Ethereum address that owns the name and they have the power to set the controller. And the controller is the Ethereum address that is allowed to change any of the records associated with this name, which we're going to look at in just a second. So for the most part, this is always going to be the same, it's always going to be you, but you can technically set the controller to somebody else if you want somebody else to have the power to change any of the records associated with a name that you own. Expiration date we talked about before. I have paid for this .eth name for two years, so it expires in 2024. And you can set reminders to remind you when to renew or extend that as well. And the resolver, which isn't super important to us. But below that, we have the box of records, and there's a lot of different things here. And you can see under Ethereum, I already have my wallet address connected, but you can also connect other wallet addresses from other blockchains. Now you can add Bitcoin, Litecoin, Doge, um, you can add and edit records. I believe there are over a hundred different blockchain addresses you could add and connect to your .eth name as well if you wanna do that. Um, and going down, you can add in content, text records. So you can input your email, a URL to a website, a, an avatar, a photo, an image to use as your avatar, which will show up where it is supported. So this is just a default one here. Um, but if I uploaded an avatar image, a profile picture, that would show up wherever I log in with this wallet. You can add in social links and all sorts of things. But do note that if you want to add anything in, which you can do by clicking on add edit records and adding them in, changing anything here does require a transaction on the blockchain. So it is going to cost you gas. So if you're going to add any text records, I highly recommend you add them all at once instead of paying gas for each individual transaction. But because gas is so high right now, I haven't added added anything. But why would you want to add these things in the first place? If you want to make any information publicly available and associated with your wallet, you can add that in here and people can, when they find your address, say on Etherscan or as a profile on a different dApp, then they can see this information that you decide to make available. 
let's take a look at what that looks like. So if I go back over to my account, I can click to view my wallet on Etherscan. So you can see here that instead of my regular address that should look something like this, now my ENS name is showing up in all of my transactions. But if I had uploaded some information into my records for my ENS name, I can find that here on Etherscan. So there's more info here right now, there's nothing, but you could have your website, your social links showing up here on this page associated with your wallet address. Now, one more thing I want to show you is that because an ENS address is an NFT, you can see it in your OpenSea wallet as well. So if you go over to OpenSea, connect your wallet, and if I go over here to my profile, you can see, bang, there it is, there is my NFT for my ENS address. Now, one thing is if you have just done this, you've just purchased your ENS name, it might not show up as your actual name. It might show that it is an unknown record. Um, if that is the case, it just needs some time. You can hurry that up by going to the page for your NFT and going up here and clicking to refresh the metadata. I can't remember how long it takes, if it's a few hours or even a couple of days. I did this and came back a few days later and it was it showed up properly with my brekerbison.eth name. Um, but it is there, it'll show up in your OpenSea wallet because it is at the end of the day an NFT, so it will show up here in your collection as well. Of course, getting your .eth name isn't free, so if you need to purchase some ETH before you get started, you can do that over at Gemini. Now, if you use my link that I put in the description below to sign up for Gemini and trade your first $500, you'll get $50 worth of free Bitcoin deposited into your account for doing so. And honestly, who doesn't love free crypto? But if you're new to crypto and you're interested in learning the basics to become a confident crypto investor, then I highly encourage you to sign up for my Crypto Basics Bootcamp course on Skillshare. This is perfect for you if you're a beginner and you wanna skip past all the confusion and avoid all of the BS that comes with trying to learn just about anything in the crypto space. You can sign up for that at the link in the description below. And when you do, you'll get a free 30 day trial of Skillshare, which you can use to access my course as well as any of the other courses on the Skillshare platform. But that just about covers it for this video, guys. So I just wanna thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up hit subscribe and share it with a friend. But otherwise, if you're ready to continue on down the crypto rabbit hole, make sure you check out one of these videos next. And I will see you guys next time.